Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. All right, so I went from a wine that I just reviewed in last week's show that reminds me of Texas to Texas wine. I didn't plan it that way, it just happened to work out that way. As I'm doing the intro, I'm like going, wait a minute, I'm going to Texas wine. Um, I'm excited about this because I haven't reviewed a Texas wine in forever. Um, so, I'm, I'm always a little bit hesitant, but I'm always really excited because Texas wine really has a um, uh, quality of Texas wine as a whole is improving. Um, and this is, a, this is a winery that's been around for a while. Um, they make uh, a decent range of wines uh, from entry level to um, technically premium because anything 20 bucks and above is premium. Um, then you get to luxury or super luxury and super premium and all that. But um, And I, I want to say I've had... Yano Estacado before a long time ago, but I don't remember. Um, I, I just don't remember. I don't know why I haven't had it. Um, but um, anyway, I'm excited to uh, to try it. This is actually one of the wineries. It's kind of on my list of places to visit if and when I, I'll ever get out to West Texas um, to go visit wineries and do interviews out there. Um, now that my now I have I I got a, a I got a, a new car la at the end of last year replaced the one I had before, and um, it's the first time I've leased a car, and so I'm like being very mileage conscious on the car. I didn't like cut it. I didn't do ten thousand miles a year or whatever. But you know I kind of figured out how many miles do I do a year, you know to be somewhat close. And I've been right on that borderline. Um, well, only this last month I did I did a couple out of town trips, so. I won't have anything out of town driving until August, so I should be building up that little reserve. Um, well, I would have already been in Dallas by the time you see this, but I went to Dallas for the Texas Texas International Wine Awards. Um, I was originally going to drive up there, um, but they had a they had a venue change, uh, not quite last minute, but you know, kind of after I had already kind of established what I was going to do, and uh, they moved back. They moved it to downtown Dallas, and I really didn't want to pay. A lot of money for parking for the car and I was like hey you know what I'll save the 500 ish almost 600 miles and um, on the car and I'll just take the mega bus so we'll see how that was I don't know never done it before anyway let's get into the wine man enough rambling so this was donated to me again uh, Kenley Jones of Yana Estacado uh, donated these wines to me very kindly I do appreciate it um, so the first wine we're going to get into is a 2015 Yano Estacado Signature White. Um, it retails for $8.99 at the winery. Um, I know people are going to hate me for doing that, but just trying to get that last bit of red out of there. All right. And uh, boom, boom, boom. Oh, before, well, while I'm, while I'm pouring the wine, we'll kind of get into this. So... Yano Estacado, so why the name? Well, that's because that's a, that's a feature. It's a geological feature of the area. Um, it's basically a mesa, um, if I were, yes. So um, it is also commonly known as the Staked Plain. Um, is a region in the southwestern United States that encompasses parts of eastern New Mexico and northwestern Texas. It's one of the largest mesas or tablelands uh, on the North American continent. Elevation rises from 3,000 feet in the southeast to over 5,000 feet in the northwest, sloping almost uniformly at about 10 feet per mile. This is all from Wikipedia. Because I was like, oh, they have a Wikipedia article about the winery. And I was like, oh, no, it's about the area. Um, I won't go through the rest of it, the whole the whole part. Um, but there, to the east, there's a... Um, kind of the eastern boundary of it. There's a thing called the Caprock Escarpment. 
And Cap Rock is also another winery in Texas in the area. Though, I, I hate to say, but I think they went out of business. There was a lot of issues with them um, in ownership and people getting bought out and lawsuits and all kinds of stuff. Um, I don't know if they're still around. I actually have a Cap Rock wine, I think, still somewhere. Uh, I don't think I had it. I don't think I've drank it. It was like a Moscato, like a dessert wine. I think it's, I think it's in the cooler. Um, anyway, uh, but it's a precipitous cliff about 300 feet high. Um, let's see what else. Uh, it stretches about 250 miles north to south, 150 miles east to west. Total area is about 37 and a half thousand square miles. It's larger than Indiana and 12 other states. Um, it covers all or part of 33 Texas counties and four New Mexico counties. Uh, here, another little interesting thing. Sometimes the National Weather Service dust, some years a National Weather Service dust storm warning is issued in parts of Texas due to a dust storm originating from the area. Um, or from the adjacent part of the southwestern tablelands ecological region. Um, and then there's lots of small playa, playa lakes that are depressions that are seasonally filled with water and provide habitat for the waterfowl. Um, they get very little rainfall. Um, anywhere between 14 and 23 inches per, per, uh, per year. 23 isn't like super bad. I mean, San Antonio is around 29-ish on average. Um, but they also have a, a really big aquifer underneath, so that helps with, uh, that helps with uh, the area. Um, so let's talk about the winery itself, uh, just their mission. The simple mission of Llano Estacado is um, there's a town in Texas called Llano, spelled the same way. Um, but they pronounce it Llano, I mean the winery. Uh, from its beginning in 1976 to its role as an industry leader today, so they've been around a while, um, has been to embody the fabulous potential of Texas wines. Uh, the mission began with 1,300 cases of wine released in 1977, and they are now the largest best-selling premium winery in Texas. Um, yeah. And then they start off um, a group of investors, including Texas Tech, Horticultural, horticulturist and, and chemist who firmly uh, believe West Texas held the potential to become uh, a source of quality wine grapes. Um, it was difficult to persuade the local farmers to invest in vineyards in the beginning um, to help persuade them uh, to experiment the uh, wine, the winery uh, original. So I, I shouldn't stop. I should not summarize. Just read it. To help persuade the local farmers who simply experiment, Yano Estacado's original winemaking facility was constructed back in the mid-1970s and founded in 1976. That makes no sense. This construction of the winery worked to encourage new grape growers. Ah, I get it. And vineyards began to... So, basically saying they built a winery to encourage them to, to do it. Um... I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's it's pretty long. Um, you can read the uh, the history. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything near the end that I really want to highlight. No. Okay. Um, and then they have another page that's about winemaking in Texas. I won't go through the whole thing, but I did read it earlier, and it it, it gives you a good kind of overview of winemaking in Texas. It has a nice little map that gives you all the AVAs in Texas. Uh, if you didn't realize, there's more than just the hill country and the uh, the high plains. Um, even I kind of forget that a couple of these exist. Um, Texoma is actually the first AVA in Texas, um, and it's on the northern border of Texas and Oklahoma. Texoma. Uh, Texas Hill Country is one of the largest AVAs in the country. And then uh, you have Escondido Valley, which I had no clue existed until I read this today. Near Fort Stockton, I don't even know what's over there. I haven't heard of any wineries there, so I gotta check that out. The Texas Davis Mountains, I know that that existed, but I forgot about it. Bell Mountain, really small. Um, it's a really small AVA in the Hill Country AVA. And then uh, this, is a, this is a new one, I did know about it. It's called Fredericksburg in the Texas Hill Country. Um, that one's actually fairly new. 
The other ones, I don't, the ones I hadn't heard of, I don't know if they're new or how new they are. All right, so Signature White um, is a blend of 51% uh, Sauvignon Blanc, 23% Chenin Blanc, 15% Viognier, and 11% Chardonnay. Uh, the Montsec Vineyard in Far West Texas is the principal source of the grapes. Um, then they talk about tasting notes. And let's see if there's anything else on here. No. Um, it retails, I already told you, $8.99 at the winery. So I'm excited to try this. I mean, I could already smell it when I was reading all this. Good, uh, good moderately intense nose. Got some good, uh, good tropical notes. Kind of leaves with peach though. Uh, a little bit of cantaloupe. A little bit of mango. Some orange. <clears throat> Nectarine even. Yeah, I like it. It's just kind of a, almost like a starburst of, of, uh, of uh, uh, aromas. Starburst really helps explain this. Like you put a bunch of different Starbursts in your mouth. Yeah. Tasty. Like, like not sweet. Okay. Not, oh my God, it's like I'm eating candy, but you got all those flavors. I mean, it's just, man, I don't know where to start. Like I start with stuff I didn't, didn't smell green apple. And I actually got a bit of, of banana at the very beginning. Like banana taffy. But I might just be insane and it may not actually be there. Um, yeah. Um, there's a bit of bitterness to it. Uh, so phenolic bitterness. Um, but not a whole lot. But um, yeah, just like all those types of candies and... and and in the in the in the vein of it tastes like the like I don't want to use the word artificial, but yeah, like candy flavors. Um, but all very flavorful, very tasty. Um, decent amount of acid to it. It's not sweet. <clears throat> um, it's not too high in alcohol, if I remember right from the text sheet. And I don't really get a whole lot. Let me go get the text sheet. Yeah, thirteen three on the alcohol. It's not too bad. Chill it a little bit. It'll it'll calm it down. No, it's not that it's like, but it'll probably really get those flavors in line a little bit better. It's not an unbalanced wine by any means. I can totally see you drinking some of this. And it's nine bucks. What's not to like about it? It's good. I mean, and it, <clears throat> I would say it, <clears throat> any other white wine blend like it out there for $9 outside of Texas, it drinks very much like that. It's not like, you know, wines from the other 46 have a tendency to be more expensive um, when you talk about quality or QPR, quality price ratio, than stuff from California especially, but even from Oregon, Washington, and New York. So that's always the hard part about drinking wine from those other states is that well, why do I have to spend, you know, $25 on your bottle of wine when it tastes like a, when it tastes like a $15 bottle of wine from California? Well, because the California winery probably makes 200,000 cases of that. And these guys make like 5,000 or something, you know? Anyway, let's get into this. I forgot to put it in front of the camera. For all the, ah, oh, man, got one more wine to do, and I got five to six weeks to get a new. Um, I'll email these guys to see if that's if that's what I need to do. All right, so Yana Estacado. Uh, this is the cellar. Whoops, 
This is the 2014 Cellar Reserve um, Cabernet Sauvignon. No, yes, Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, let's see here. So I'm just going to read the, the little marketing thing that I got sent. Uh, it represents the finest that Yano has to offer, selected from small batches of wine produced in 2004, the winemakers have come up with an intriguing wine. Uh, it is 95% Cabernet Sauvignon from both the Montsec Vineyard of Far West Texas and the Newsom Vineyard in Plains, Texas, plus 5% Malbec from Carpenter Farms in Dell City, Texas. Uh, Barrel Aging has created a complex wine showing him... I'm um, not going to go through all that. It should reach full maturity by 2018, so i got about a year. Um... Anyway, so reason why it was like Newsom. Newsom is one of the one of the well known and well respected vineyards in Texas that produces really good quality grapes. And they want to. I'm trying to not use the word premium or high end or whatever, but they're they're definitely up there. They're you know they make really good. Well, they they grow really good grapes for for Texas wines. A lot of the premium winemakers in Texas get get grapes from there. All right. Oh, this retails for um, uh, I think it's twenty bucks. Twenty dollars at the winery. All right. leather that's what it is it's like at first i was like what is that smell and it wasn't a bad thing but i'm like i wasn't expecting that like new leather like so in san antonio growing up i mean it still exists the el mercado um you had all these shops in there it's also this big marketplace and there's so many these places that sell all these like leather wallets and leather goods and belts and bags and of course boots, but just that that overwhelming smell of of like just new leather um, when you walk into a shop. I really get that. Also get um, a spiciness. I get um, I get like potpourri, cedar box. Um, Clove, a bit of a touch of green, like yeah, just like like a, like a green pepper, a little, just 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 a touch. Some spicy fruit, like like you uh like you you uh dip some uh some raspberries or whatever in, in some like jalapeno juice or something and a bit of bramble so it's like i took a leather wallet dipped it into some raspberry cherry jalapeno juice, let it sit in there for a while and I licked it. And I liked it. It's kind of weird though, I mean, the whole visual, but was not expecting that kind of flavor from this. This thing tastes like Texas, okay? This does not taste like anything from California, from Bordeaux, from Chile. Um, maybe, maybe you could give an argument for Chile. Maybe, I don't know. I don't drink enough Chilean cabs. Um, definitely not from anywhere else. I mean, not from the big four. Well, they only make a lot of Cabernet Sauvignon in New York, but... Um, or that, for that matter, really Oregon, but you know, you're not, you're not going to see this for a California or a Washington cab. 
Um, I don't know enough cabs elsewhere in the country, and you're definitely not going to mistake this for uh, an old world cab or a cab from any other part of the world. It is super interesting, and I do mean that in a good way, um, but realize that if you're expecting a Texas California cab, in other words, you know, a California cab that was just happening bottled in Texas, they got all the grapes from Cali, or they just totally processed it with whatever, ye you know, some commercial yeast and tons of French oak or something like that, because that's the flavor profile people expect from cab. In my opinion, that's not what you're going to get from this cab. And I'm not saying it has tons of green to it, but there's definitely a green to it. Um, there's good tannin to it, good acid to it. Um, I like this wine because it's interesting. And I'm happy that it doesn't taste like California. It doesn't taste like Washington. It doesn't taste like anywhere else because wine is supposed to taste like it came from an area. Now, whether you like this wine or not is gonna, up to you. I like it because of the interesting factor. Um, if I was handed this as told it was a $20 bottle of California wine, I'd probably tell you I don't like it, okay? Or I tell you, man, it's kind of weird. You know, maybe I like it because of the weirdness of it, but but I like it because it, it evokes Texas. To me, maybe if you have it, and it's gonna, I don't know how, how easy it's gonna be for you to get this outside of Texas, but if you get it or you're in here in Texas and you drink it, you're like, Mark, you're full of, you know, you know what? Full of cow patties. Plenty of those out here too. Ever stepped in one? Um, anyway, um, I like it. I'm interested to try this kind of like relaxed, in a relaxed state and, and all that, so. Really interesting, and I do mean really interesting. All right, um, I think that's all I got on, on everything here. I already pulled everything up. Yeah, let's get moving on because um, I have an early wake up call. All right, so thank you for stopping by. Click the links above to friend me up. Hit the donate button over there to send me some ducats to buy wine. Links below for uh, the winery and also link the uh, Wiki Wikipedia entry about the, um, the Mesa, the Llano Estacado. And uh, we will see everyone again next time.